Here in the Cotswold Farm Park, we've got our restaurant and our bar, and it's called the Rare Breed Bar, named after our beer, Adam Henson's Rare Breed, which is brewed by Buckham Brewery. And I think it's delicious pipe. Well, I would do, wouldn't I? But anyway, let me tell you a little bit about the brewing process. Of course, the main ingredient in beer is malting barley that farmers grow. And the variety in here that we grow on the farm is Maris Otter. And once the seeds are harvested, they go off to a molster. And what happens is they put beds of seed down, so they're about that thick, they get them nice and wet and warm them. And what happens is those seeds that are ready to grow next year's crop start to germinate. And in the germination process, they're turning the starches into sugar. And as that starts to happen, the molster will stop the process, dry it all out, and then you have your malt. And that malt is sold from malt houses to brewers all over the country. And Maris Otter Malting Barley is a very, very good malt. So let me take you out into the field and show you a little bit more. It is Maris Otter Malting Barley. We're growing it in this field and then all those fields you can see in the background. And it's quite an old variety of barley. Originally it was a cross between Proctor and Pioneer and they created this Maris Otter that is renowned in the malting industry for being very consistent in the brew. It's the Rolls Royce of malts really. And it's owned by Robin Appel Limited. They own the intellectual property on the seed bank and they select good farmers to grow it and thankfully they've chosen us as one of those farmers and we grow it on a contract for them at a fixed price and we do that because it's quite difficult to grow more modern varieties are much more disease resistant but this Maris Otter on the leaf it suffers from a lot of the common diseases so rhynchosporium, mildews and brown rusts so Martin, our arable manager, isn't a great fan of growing it, but he does do it very well. It is also quite low yielding in comparison to some of the more modern varieties. A modern variety might be eight ton a hectare on a farm like this, but this Maris Otter is yielding, you know, five and a half, six ton to the hectare. But what we do get is very, very good quality grain and we get a premium price for it. And it's not far off harvest now. If I get one of these heads, it's got a, a two-row barley, so it's got seeds on either side of the head. You sometimes get six-row barleys, but this is a two-row barley. These spikes on it are called the awns. If you just break those off, get the seed head and rub it in your hand, almost imitating what the thrashing of the combine does, blow off all those awns, and you're left with the seed. And that seed for harvesting, we want it to be around 14, 14 and a half percent moisture. And it needs to be very hard. So doing the bike test, God, oh, that's pretty solid. It's very nearly there. I would say we'll be in harvesting this, oh, probably 10 days time. And the great thing about winter barley, it does come to harvest early, way before the wheats. So you can spread your combining out across your different crops. Once it's combined, the straw comes out the back of the combine and then we bale that up and use it for feed and bedding for our animals. So it's really nearly there. And uh, you'd have thought at this time of year for our arable team, there'd be a bit of a calm before the storm of harvest, but actually they're all really busy getting the grain stores ready because harvest is just around the corner. I've just come over to the grain stores where there's a hive of activity but parked up next to them are our two New Holland combines. And these are great big machines that when they're out in the field working have a 35 foot header on the front with a cutter bar and a reel that draws the cut crop up the front of the combine into the guts where it's thrashed. The straw falls out the back and the grain ends up in the tank. And then with an unloading spout, the grain falls into these trailers that are parked up behind at the moment and the grain is brought back to the grain store. And we'll cover more on harvest when these machines are rolling in a few weeks time. But for now, let's go and take a look in the grain stores. When the grain is bought from the field in the trailers, it's tipped into here. It goes along a conveyor along the ground and then up 
into our grain dryer, where it's dried if it's too wet, and it's also clean to take any rubbish out of the grain. And once that clean, dry grain comes out of the dryer, it goes along that top conveyor and drops into the various compartments so we can store wheat, barley, oilseed rape in the different bays, and that's where the guys are cleaning them out, getting them ready for harvest. The different grain types and crop varieties drop into these separate bays. We then put up a shutter wall, and then there's a roller shutter door that keeps these compartments completely enclosed. And what we need to do is get them lovely and clean. There's lots of dust in harvest, and in this dust, what it can do is harbour mites, things like grain weevils. And they hatch out when the grain is in here, and they start feeding on the grain, particularly if it's a little bit damp. And once they start feeding, they create their own warmth and their own moisture, and they can just damage the whole heap of grain. So we plant the grain in the autumn, spend the whole year with all that energy and effort producing it. It's then harvested and brought into store. And if it then gets damaged by mites, it can be disastrous. And so what we've got here is Colin in the cage. He'll be getting right up into the eaves. We've got a cherry picker as well that can get right up high, hoovering out all the dust. We've got Alfie in another store wiping down the walls because this store hygiene, getting it pristinely clean, is absolutely essential. And once the stores are clean, keeping them closed up so there's no rodents or birds getting in there that might contaminate the grain. It's a lot of hard work, but absolutely essential. Well, the stores are very nearly ready and harvest is just around the corner. The next time you're enjoying a pint of bitter or pale ale on a lovely summer's evening, hopefully that's given you a better insight into what's in beer. You've got your malt and then of course water, in this case Mendip spring water, and then hops that add some of the flavour. And this rare breed, to me, is one of the best around. What could be better? <laughs>